Scammers out to make a quick buck during the coronavirus pandemic are using robocalls to tout bogus cures and fake test kits. The illicit conduct, which also includes text messaging, has bad actors preying on people's fears while anxiety over COVID-19 is high. Good evening, I'm John Jenkinson, and welcome to this month's edition of Rural America Live with AARP and to our listeners joining us on Rural Radio, Channel 147 on Sirius XM. Well, tonight we want to focus on pandemic scams and misinformation. Here's our question of the month. Are you receiving calls and emails about COVID-19 testing and vaccinations? If so, tell us about them. Five lucky winners on air callers will win a Yeti cooler. If you're caller number two, four, six, eight, or 10, you'll be a winner. We want you to join our conversation, so give us a call at 877-283-7570. You don't need to be a member of AARP or over 50. As a reminder, you can win only once each calendar year. We want to let those who are winners tonight know that AARP will call you back using the number you called from it won't be tonight, but they will give you a call in the next few days to confirm your mailing address. If you are a past winner and have not received your cooler, be sure to return their call to provide a shipping address. Well, joining me tonight are friends from AARP. State Director from Vermont, Greg Marshallton, joins us from Burlington. And Washington State Director and AARP fraud expert and Doug Shadell is live in Seattle. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you, John. Pleasure to be here. Good evening, John. Uh, I guess this kind of marks a milestone then, doesn't it, Greg? Well, it's, it sure does, John. This um, is going to be our 10th anniversary year um, working with RFD-TV on AARP Live, um, which seems kind of incredible that it's actually been that long. So we're looking forward to it. This is the beginning of the 10th season, and we look forward to many more. Well, and I got to share with both of you gentlemen and our audience as well. I always look forward to these as well. Uh, you folks at AARP are such tremendous folks to work with. And uh, I always leave this show learning something every time. So it's always a joy for us too. And we enjoy that relationship as well. Let's get right into this. There's a lot to cover tonight. And I want to start with some of the great online resources that AARP has for everyone. Greg, what is AARP doing to keep trusted information around this pandemic flowing? Well, John, obviously AARP is very serious about making sure the public has the right information around the vaccine rollout, uh, as well as scams that are uh, taking advantage of people's eagerness to know everything they can about the vaccine's availability in their own state, which of course varies tremendously from state to state. So folks can go to this great resource at aarp.org slash coronavirus, and you'll see a map of the country on the right side of the screen. You put your state in, and you'll find the latest information on your state's vaccination rollout. Now, we're real serious about this. We're updating this site weekly. Sometimes we're updating it daily, in fact, to make sure everybody has up-to-the-date information on the latest information um, from both their state agencies and the federal government's plans as we move forward. So it's a real uh, kind of a moving target, John. So we're encouraging people to, uh, to stay close to this information and check in with it regularly. Okay, Greg. Well, thank you very much on that. And folks, we want you to join the conversation and call the number on your screen. We have five Yeti coolers to give away tonight. Doug, we know that fraudsters always follow the headlines. So what scams related to the pandemic are you hearing about? And are there some of the uh, others that are are more popular than uh, that are going on. Well, you know, I was thinking about this as we we're coming on tonight. And one of the things I love about your audience is every time I come on, I learn something I didn't know before from your audience. So just to begin with, I'd love to hear from people if they call in with, if any of these things we're talking about ring a bell, or if you know somebody who's uh, gotten these approaches, you know, before COVID, pre-COVID, there were all these scams that were related to Medicare, durable medical equipment, things like, you know, robo calls about back braces and neck braces and pain cream. Um, and then the COVID hit last March and it sort of shifted. And a lot of the scammers started using that big news story, which is the hallmark of all scams, 
to start selling masks. I, I myself fell for a scam on Facebook. Um, my family was trying to, we desperately looking for masks at the last April. And I finally saw an ad on Facebook that three masks for $29. Did I check them out? No, I just paid the money, never saw the masks. We can get to that in a minute, but I, I myself have fallen for these scams. Everything from that to rubber gloves to you know PPE, FDA approved in-home testing. That was during the height of the COVID. We saw those scams predominant. Um, and then we started talking about this vaccine and some scams that almost were examples of transitioning from COVID to vaccine COVID. There were scams, one I just read about where they were offering money to be in the group that was testing it. The clinical trial test will pay you $1,200, give us your bank account number. Um, and so just, and, and now what we've got is just a whole range of robo dials in particular that you know if you pay $79, you can jump the line and you can um, move up in the vaccine line. The distribution of the vaccine has been so chaotic. You know, zealots thrive in chaos, and con artists will tell you that during these periods of time where it's not clear like when you're eligible, that's the perfect time to strike, and we're really seeing that. In fact, I think you may even have some, do we have some examples of robocalls? I can't remember. Yes, we do. I'm glad that you brought that up. So oh. let's give these a listen. Thank you for calling Coronavirus Hotline because of the limited testing. We are first taking Medicare members. Will the free at home test be just for you or for you and your spouse? Hello, this is Scott. I'm a medical administrator calling on a recorded line with helpful information regarding the flu season and the rapidly spreading coronavirus. How are you today? Doug, uh, these sound actually really real. So why do people want to believe these callers? Well, I mean, if they use the word Medicare, if they use the word Social Security, people want to trust government agencies and people in authority. Um, and if you're already in a heightened state of anxiety, I mean, one of the things we've learned in studying this crime is that what makes you most vulnerable is when you're in a heightened emotional state. Well, who right now in the United States isn't in a heightened emotional state, given everything that's going on, the transition from one government to another, 400,000 people dead, uh, a chaotic vaccine disruption. It's the perfect time to strike. And, you know, with the RoboDial technology, you can press a button for $100. You can press a button and call 100,000 people. So it's very little barriers to entry in this. And you can make up whatever you want. Yes, it's illegal, but it's really hard to catch people. And I think, you know, one of the things we, I wrote about this in the, in the AARP magazine last month, interviewing Stanford scholars about why do people trust liars? I was just interested in that and it's relevant to fraud. And there's this thing called the deception consensus effect. It's a, a fancy term for it. Basically, John, if, if I'm somebody who doesn't lie myself, I assume you don't either. Or if I'm somebody who's really dishonest myself, I assume you are. Well, most people are honest. And so they just assume others are as well. So and that's kind of an over oversimplification in a way, but it is really a, a legitimate psychological thing. Now, now maybe that's changing given the nature of our politics and all the flood of misinformation. I hope so. I hope people are becoming a little more skeptical because there's a lot of fraud out there. Wow. Well, I tell you what, gentlemen, we're going to take a short break. The phone lines are open, so give us a call. 877-283-7570. It's absolutely toll free and you can join the conversation. Are you getting calls and emails offering coronavirus test kits and vaccines delivered to your home? We'd love to hear from you. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Rural America Live with AARP.
Hi, I'm Joe Bonzel with the Oak Ridge Boys. Got a minute to talk about Social Security imposter scams? Scammers are always looking to capture people's personal information, and Social Security numbers are highly valuable. And because of that, scammers often impersonate the Social Security Administration. They may pose as a friendly Social Security officer who just needs to confirm your information, including your Social Security number. Or they may use fear tactics to force the target's hand out of fear that their Social Security number will be suspended, something the Social Security Administration never does. They may even call you with good news. You are eligible for a special cost of living adjustment. All you need to do is confirm your Social Security number. Know this, the Social Security Administration will not call you out of the blue. You may get a legitimate call if you have an existing issue that you have been working on with the Social Security Administration. If you aren't expecting a call, when Social Security calls, hang up. Hey, be a fraud fighter. If you can spot a scam, you can stop a scam. Visit the AARP Fraud Watch Network at aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork or call the AARP Fraud Watch Network helpline at 1-877-908-3360 to report a scam or to get help if you have fallen victim. Thanks. And thank you, great advice. And welcome back to Rural America Live. I'm here with our friends from AARP. Doug Shadell is live in Seattle, Washington, and Greg Marshallton is live in Burlington, Vermont. Pandemic scams and misinformation is the topic tonight. Are you getting those calls, emails, and text messages offering free at-home COVID-19 test kits? Or how about callers saying, if you're on Medicare, they can help you get a vaccination more quickly? We're giving away five Yeti coolers, and we want you to join the conversation. If you're caller 2, 4, 6, 8, or 10, you'll be a winner. Give us a call right now. The number on your screen, 877-283-7570. We have five Yeti coolers to give away, so let's get to it. Greg, I want to start with you. I think one of the most important things people can do is share information about scams and frauds that they already know about. So tell us about some of the resources that AARP has that can help them do just exactly that. John, AARP has a, a long-standing program, AARP's Fraud Watch Network which can help with information and can also uh, provide the helpline for folks can really call anytime. It's a toll-free number, so you can write it down and keep it handy. That number is 877-908-3360. And that helpline is staffed with highly trained volunteers that will take your call and offer you some advice on how to avoid scams in the future. We also have a scam tracking map uh, on our website as well, at the Fraud Watch Network. And you can add your scam to the database by just going to the site and going to the map and clicking on your state and adding the scam to it and learning about scams in your own local communities around your state. And also, we strongly encourage people to sign up for the Watchdog Alerts at aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork. That helps people stay informed um, and provides them information about scams that may be going on in their, in their local communities. So, again, to Doug's earlier point, um, the more people know and the more aware they are about what's going on around them with scams, um, they're much, it's going to be much easier to prevent them. And, of course, sharing this information with friends and family is really critical. So the more people know, the more we can protect. Not a scam. You can stop a scam. We have callers on the phone, so let's do just exactly that and take our first caller who just also happens to uh, be joining us now from Kentucky. Charlotte is here with us. Good evening, Charlotte. We're so glad that you've joined us this evening. What's your question or comment? Well, uh, my question is, I have some I have had some of these calls and and I know I know they're not good. I have hung up on them or just told them to leave me alone. But I have a lot of friends that might not realize that these are scams, but I also want to know how, who do we call? Do we call our law enforcement or how do we report these calls? That's a great question, Doug. Yeah, um, there's a number of places you can call to report, uh, especially these robocalls, you know, these automated calls. You can contact the Federal Trade Commission, you can contact your local attorney general's office and report them. 
And, uh, and that's important to do because even though there's millions and millions of these calls, law enforcement needs to know about it. We've done surveys before that have shown that um, people who say they were scammed or who got these approaches, 80 to 90% of them never report it because they just don't think it's worth it or whatever. So it, it is really important to do that. And you know, just one, one tip on how to stop these. One idea is to sign up for the Do Not Call Registry, which you can go to ftc.gov, and uh, that will take you off some lists. But there are also a number of robo-blocking technologies out there, software that you can download. Nomo Robo is one, Robo Killer is another. And these eliminate an awful lot of those unwanted calls because they ha they are tracking the current robocalls that are arising, um, and they will just simply screen them out. Greg, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, well, Doug, I want to go back to one of the things you said just to put a finer point on it, which is contacting your local attorney, uh, your attorney general's office. Most attorney general's offices in the country have some kind of a consumer assistance line or a consumer helpline. And it's really important to report this stuff in your state because what might be going on out in Washington might not be going on here in Vermont. And so it's really helpful for local law enforcement to be able to have that information at their fingertips. We share that information locally with our AG's office. So we strongly encourage people to make that call um, in addition to the other things that Doug talked about. But, but providing that information to your AG's staff uh, in your state can make a real big difference. Let's go back over here to the telephones, and Fred is calling in from Virginia. And Fred, I've got great news. You are the winner of a Yeti cooler. So first of all, congratulations. Uh, what's your uh, question or comment? Okay, my, my uh, comment was I'm a veteran, and I got my COVID shot at the Veterans Hospital and the Veteran Administration, whatever you want to call it. And if the veterans would call and get an appointment right away, and they'll take them right away. They're taking all the veterans and giving them their COVID shots. And most of your AARP members are veterans. I think it'd be great to know that. I think they need to know that. Well, Fred, thank you very much, and thank you very much for your service. Doug, any, uh, any thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're in one of those. That's a good tip. If you're a veteran call, calling the VA, we're also going to say a lot tonight. If you have questions about vaccination, calling your primary care physician um, is to find out where the best place to go is is probably another good step uh, because right now the distribution is kind of all over the place. So contacting your 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 personal family physician, primary care physician would probably be the the best first step. And, you know, if you're a veteran and you know you've got the contacts there and they're willing to do it, I don't see any reason not to do that. What you want to avoid is anybody contacting you and saying, even if they claim to be the VA, and saying, you know, for, for a small fee of $39, you can come in right now and get it. You shouldn't have to pay for the COVID vaccine. And so that's a huge red flag. Another red flag is if they say, well, Medicare, it's free. But you got to give me all your Medicare information and somebody's calling who you don't know. Um, the best way to just is to just not go with any of those and just contact your, look, your doctor. Greg, any thoughts, add-ons to that? Yeah, and I would just also add that what AARP is doing, I talked about a little bit with John in the opening. You can go to aarp.org backslash vaccine. Um, and then you'll see there the listing of all 50 states. You click on your state. And we're monitoring um, the de each state's Department of Health website. You know, Doug talked about contacting your physician, which is a good idea. Um, but your state's Department of Health um, are the folks that are generally in charge of how vaccines are being distributed, um, when vaccines are going to be available, how each state is doing it. Um, so AARP is tracking those, uh, those sites on a daily basis. So you can go to aarp.org, again, slash vaccine. Uh, click on your state and get all the information you need there as well. Well, joining us now from Wisconsin is Jeff. Jeff, good evening. Welcome to Rural America Live with AARP. What's your comment or question? Well, the question I have is I'm curious now, as of next Monday, uh, everyone statewide 65 and older is going to be qualified for this. And 
I know that there's a gap between the first and second doses of the vaccine. Here in state on our news uh, on a nightly basis, they talk about there are X number of uh, vaccines from Moderna and X number from Pfizer. When you get your first dose, how do you know that you're going to have the same vaccine available for your second dose? But, you know, the same uh, pharmaceutical company, because I don't know this, but I would think that you couldn't mix the two of them. Doug? Yeah, I mean, I think this no, is you, another example of... Oh, um, go, go ahead. Greg. Doug. Go ahead, I was ahead, Doug. say that um, uh, they're going to track that right away. So if you um, if you're going to if you're going to um, uh, a, 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 vac a vaccination facility and you're getting the Pfizer vaccine, they're going to give you a card. People are getting these um, CDC cards, and they'll uh, put the date on that card, and then they'll instruct you uh, in three weeks to, to come back. So they're able to track individuals um, so that you're getting the second dose. Um, and then you're getting the second dose of the of the same vaccine um, that you started with. Um, those things, I think, are working fine right now. Uh, but to Doug's point, what we have is sort of a 50-state sort of patchwork quilt here with how um, this is happening. Um, and there's a lot, you know, there have been less doses than we had originally thought. Um, but there really shouldn't, there really isn't a concern at this point about mixing the vaccines. Uh, that's being tracked very carefully. Um, and when you go get a vaccine, when, you're, when your turn is up or when you've been called to do that, um, they'll explain everything to you after you receive your first vaccine, um, where you have to be and what you have to do to receive your second. That's a, good, that's a very good point. I tell you what, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we are here tonight with AARP talking to the experts about the scams that surround this coronavirus. So give us a call right now. The telephone number is toll free. Pick up the phone and dial right now, 877-283-7570. And joining us now is Pamela from Louisiana. Pamela, we're so glad that you've called. And by the way, congratulations, you are a winner of a Yeti cooler. What's your comment or question? Thank you. Um, well, I've been getting calls over and over and over, and I am really tired of it. And I picked up on one, and... He was trying, I think he was saying it was a COVID testing kit and that if I wanted to send a check or I could send a green card from Walmart. And I finally felt that this is a scam. So I looked on my phone and it said he was calling from Jamaica. And I said, Jamaica? He said, yeah, Jamaica, New York. And I kind of, he talked on for a little while and then I hung up and I thought, well, there's no Jamaica in New York. So now I'm waiting for my phone bill to see if I'm being charged for a phone call from Jamaica. But this is wickedness. I have lost seven friends to COVID-19 in the past two weeks. And this is nothing that they should be causing a scam about and getting money from people. I, um, you said a while ago that this pandemic is making people uh, nervous and upset, and you're right. I'm 88 years old, and this is the worst thing I have ever known in my life. And I lived through World War II. But this is the worst thing I have ever known. And nobody should be trying to make money off of older people when there's something like this going on. This is wicked with these people. But I have called the phone, and they can't seem to stop the calls from coming in. And I have wanted to take my landline out, but now they can get through on my cell phone and on my husband, so there seems to be no stopping them. So I don't know what the answer is, but I'm really in a place that it's hitting very, very hard. 
and it's it's hard to uh, live with losing all these people. Pamela, you make so some great. Should- yeah, go ahead. You, you make some great points here. And Doug, um, you know, she goes back and talks about, and she, she addressed this, the fear that, that, drives, this, uh, that drives us to, to actually think that this is real. Yeah. Well, first of all, Pamela, just my heart goes out to you for the friends that you've lost. And um, I've had a lot of friends myself who have had COVID, and it's just everyone is in this horrible place about that. Um, And unfortunately, that is what makes us most vulnerable. Now, what you did to resist these calls about the free testing kit was exactly what you should have done. You did exactly the right thing. Hang up on them. I actually think there is a Jamaica, New York. Um, But but nevertheless, bad guy is a bad guy. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, You you could consider getting some of these call blocking... uh, uh, services. If you don't want to, because it costs money, you could just have everything go to voicemail, and they don't usually leave voicemail messages. These scammers. Um, it, it's unfortunate because it's sort of polluting your mailbox, and they're taking advantage of people when we are at our most vulnerable. Which I just cannot tell you how angry that makes me, um, and which is why we spend so much time on the air and issuing press releases and setting up toll-free numbers because this has been going on for a long time. But the country is particularly vulnerable right now. Greg, do you have anything to add? You know, Doug, I, I just want to just, I guess, uh, just, just sort of uh, amplify your point. It's just that uh, sort of how shaky we all are right now. I mean, Pamela's call um, should be a real siren to all the all the viewers out there tonight. Um, with the pandemic and everything else that is going on. Um, this, as you said, is fertile ground for these for these scammers, and um, we just have people just have to get themselves into a position where they can be on high alert and they can think clearly about this, um, because um, really it's fertile ground and it is so ripe for these folks to come in and take people's money. So again, that's sort of what Doug's saying: you know, take a step, take a step back, take a deep breath, um, and uh, don't answer the phone. If, if you don't, if the number comes up on your uh, on your phone and you don't know who it is, uh, don't take the call. That's the best way to protect yourself. Let's visit with Rose from West Virginia. Rose, thank you very much for calling in tonight. What's your comment or question? Yes, I was sick in bed with COVID November and December, and I had calls that I figured out were scams because I told them, I said, yes, I'm sick with COVID right now. And they wanted me to send money to for a kit that would cure me in three days. And so I just hung up on them. Doug, is but that I right would then? like to know, since I've already had COVID, should I have the vaccination? And no one addresses that question. Doug, your thoughts? Yeah. Well, in the first place, I mean, that just, you know, as if I wasn't all agitated from the last call about how mean these people are. Here you are suffering yourself. You actually have COVID. The phone rings and somebody says they've got a miracle cure. And I'm sure they were going to charge you money for it. And boy, talk about being, they were so smart to hang up on them. I just want to reiterate you do not have to talk to these people. The best advice on the question of vaccination is, it, I don't know that the science is clear yet um, on whether having you know, had it once, you've got enough um, antibodies to prevent it. You, you really ought to, that's another example of talking to your primary care physician about whether you should get a, vac- a vaccination. But you were sure smart to hang up on these people when you did. Greg? Yeah, I, I just want to say that, too. She did exactly the right thing. I mean, again, if it sounds too good to be true, uh, it always is. And uh, if, there was a, uh, if there was a miracle cure for COVID, uh, we wouldn't be 10 months into this pandemic right now. Let's go to Montana, and Don joins us. Don, what's your comment or question for our panelists tonight? Yeah, my question is, is, uh, is there anything to be done to uh, stop all these scams and stuff with all electronic stuff that's going on in this world. Uh, We're getting all these calls, you know, from scams 
two, three, four a day, and you know they're scams, you pick them up, and as soon as they hear it, I hang up. But is there any way we can correct this situation? That's my question. Well, that's a, that's a great question and on a lot of people's mind. And, Don, we do want to congratulate you. You are a winner, one of those Yeti coolers. Doug, is, I mean, you, you've mentioned some of these things. Uh, can you go a little more into depth? Well, a lot of our consumer education is directed towards here's what you as an individual can do to avoid scams. Don't make decisions when you're in a heightened emotional state. The whole country's in a heightened emotional state now, so never make a decision you know, in that context. It sounds too good to be true and so forth. But there are some moves. This robo-dial problem, last month alone, in December of 2020, there were 4 billion robo-dials flooding into the United States. And the best estimates we have working with our partners at Noma Robo is that almost 60% of those are just out-and-out -out frauds, right? So that's like, what, 2.3 billion fraud calls a month coming into the United States? And my understanding is that there is uh, that, the, that the FCC has promulgated some new rules, which put much more pressure now on the phone companies to actually do something themselves for their customers, so that you don't necessarily have to rely on a third party, uh, Robo Killer or whatever, Novo Robo, but that they are going to be required um, for the first time to take steps. So this is why I think a lot of us, you know, your your carrier you may start getting phone calls that say possible scam on it. They're starting to build that software into their um, systems. And I think that's going to, I mean, technology got us into this problem. Technology is going to get us out. We, we really believe in consumer education. Warn yourself, warn your neighbors. But we also have to have structural changes that get at the root of this. Because like I said, if you can spend $100 and make 100,000 fraudulent phone calls, and that can be from anywhere in the world, that's a tough thing to stop. Greg, anything Greg? to add? Well, yeah, I, mean, I just want to double back to, I think the caller said, you know, that they're getting, he's getting three, four, five of these a day and he's picking up the phone. Uh, one of the things that we know does happen is, is that they're able to identify the scammers, people that pick up the phone, even if you hang it up right away. So if you pick it up, um, you know, you're going to find yourself on the list um, as someone that picks up the phone for these calls, and you're going to get more and more and more of these calls. So, again, a really good rule is, so, you know, it's just to make sure, you know, when that call comes in, if it's your son or your, your aunt or a friend, you can pick up the phone because you know the number and their name's uh, coming right there in your caller ID. But if it's not a number you don't know, if it's a number you don't know, don't pick it up. If it's someone that does know you or if someone calling for an appointment or your doctor's office, they'll leave a message. As Doug said, these scammers usually don't leave messages. So, again, the best way to protect yourself is don't answer the phone if you don't know the number. And that will keep you uh, off these lists and over time will, will reduce uh, the amount of calls you get. All right. Um, here on Real America Live tonight with AARP, we're talking about scams when it comes to who. COVID-19. This is a this is a very important, very hot topic, and we've had a lot of great calls tonight. If you haven't called in yet, this is your opportunity because <laughs> this is a safe number to call, and I don't think we'll get any scam calls here. 877-283-7570. Uh, once again, it's a toll-free call. If you have had one of these calls, or if you know of someone who has had one of these calls, or or maybe you want to ask a question about how to stop this, uh, give that number a call. Once again, 877-283-7570. Doug, I do have one question. As we, I've been listening to all of these questions here tonight. What about uh, international calls? I know that you, uh, you talked about the uh, Nomo Robo, but is there a way to block these international calls from when they are outside of the country? Yeah. The way a lot of these call blocking systems work now is... Um, uh, they will, well, what Nomo Robo does is basically they purchase old mothballed phone lines, um, and they run those lines into a computer and it's create, creates sort of a honeypot, right? Cause the calls are still coming into those lines. A robo dialer doesn't know who they're calling. They're just randomly calling people. And so when they find a call that's coming from India, for example, and it's calling a thousand of these different numbers, 
that's a robocall. So they put that into a blacklist database. So John, when you sign up for one of these call blocking services and then I call you, the first thing it does is it compares my number coming in to the blacklisted number. And if there's a match, it blocks it. And if there's not a match, it lets it go through. And this eliminates 98% of the calls that you get. And really, you know, the last survey we did, only about 15% of the country has a, a call blocking service. And, and, and they block calls from everywhere. It says it's not just US calls, because these 800 numbers that they use, they change every, sometimes every hour. Um, and some of these call blocking companies are identifying 1,000 new robocallers a day. Wow. Um, so that is one so technological solution that has a lot of promise, and a lot of people still aren't doing it. The, the other thing I just want to mention about that, the last thing, not to get too in the weeds about this, um, but you might say, well, what, what if it blocks my, my mother from calling or my friend? You can actually program in there a white list of numbers. If there's a black list, those are the bad guys you don't want. You could have a white list, which is like, here are the five people I always want to go through because these are the five people I talk to or the 10 people I talk to. So that is a possible solution and it would be an international one. Very good. You, Greg? Uh, yeah, Greg? No, I don't have anything to add to that. That, that, that explanation will serve itself, yep. <laughs> Okay, uh, give us a t give us a call right now. 877-283-7570. We still have some Yeti coolers to give away and you could be a winner. So once again, it's toll free. Grab the phone right now. Uh, we would love to hear from you. 877-283-7570 is the toll free number. Just give us a call. Let's go to Missouri now and Jerry joins us. Good evening, Jerry. Welcome to Rural America Live with AARP. What's your comment or question? Okay, now I've got, how do I tell if an email is a bad email or not? It looks like it's, you know, from a doctor or a doctor's office, but I can't really tell for sure. How do, how do I tell that? Wow, Doug, that's, that's something we hadn't addressed yet. We, get, we talk about robocalls, but do we get fraud, uh, fraudulent emails as well? Oh, my goodness. Gracious. <laughs> we don't have enough time on you. We're going to have to do a whole show about phishing emails. Oh, I mean, they are just everywhere. And again, technology makes it so easy to spoof, uh, to pretend to be somebody that you're not. You know, you can literally go on to a bank's website and with the click of a button, make a perfect copy of their logo, put it on an email and send it to the Jerry in Missouri and say, we've got some suspicious activity on your account, click on this link. And when you click on the link, it'll take you to a website that is a fake phishing website that looks like your bank, looks exactly like your bank. And then they ask you to put your bank account information in there. And that's what they're in it for. They're in it to steal your bank information. And once they have your bank information, they're in your account. So if you get an email from your bank, and there's all kinds of, you know, micro, there's Microsoft fake phishing emails. There's a million Amazon ones. Um, the best thing to do is to never click on a link from anybody. You know, the best thing to do is if, if your bank contacts you and says there's something wrong with your account, just delete that email and contact your bank independently. Don't click on the link. Don't call the number that's there because that number is going to take you to potentially a boiler room in, in India or Singapore or whatever. Um, and, you know, there's this thing called the, the anti-phishing working group, and they track how many of these fake websites um, are created. And it's, it's like 100,000 a month, it, you know. Um, so that's another whole area. You know, we could, we could go through the list, text, text scams, robo scams, email scams. The bottom line is, you know, your personal information, we keep talking about don't give out any money, don't pay for a fake or a, a vaccine or whatever, but be very cautious about who you give personal information to and understand that the Federal Trade Commission says now last three years in a row that imposter scams are the number one category of fraud in America. That's pretending to be Social Security, pretending to be your bank, Amazon, and so forth. So you really got to watch for that. 
Um, and just because it's a logo you recognize doesn't mean it's really them. Greg? Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of information that Doug unpacked for you there. You no, know, sim maybe simplify it a little bit. And again, the, the email, the telephone, even your snail mail, it's like it's coming at you from all different angles. Um, but as you think about the, 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 the fishing pieces, as Doug just talked about, I just try to remind people that always ask me about this. It's just like, don't click the links. You know, if it's, a, if it's an email not coming uh, from someone you know, um, you know, if your bank needs to get in touch with you or the Social Security Administration needs to get in touch, in touch with you or your physician needs to get in touch with you, they're going to call you on the telephone uh, and have a conversation with you. So don't get drawn in and don't click those links because when that happens, um, it sets up a whole series of terrible things that could happen inside of your computer, mostly that will compromise your personal information, lead to identity theft, and that leads to all sorts of trouble. 877-283-7570. The number is on your screen. Jane dialed that number. Jane lives in North Carolina, and she is a winner. So, Jane, congratulations. We're glad that you've called us tonight. What's your comment or question? Yes, sir. I was calling about when they call you, a lot of the scammers do, they'll sound like they're real, and then they'll want to set you up an appointment for you and your husband or you or whoever. And then they want to charge you. They'll tell us to go to Walmart. Ain't there a Walmart near you? And even tell you how to buy a card. And it and it sounds real, but they won't give you your money back like they tell you they do. Let me go over there. What can we do about that? Who do we Did that happen that to you? Yes, sir. Did yes, that sir. happen to you? Can you tell us a little bit more about it? I mean, you don't but have to. You don't want to. What, what? Oh, that's fine. I was going over to Walmart, but my husband, he, he got it for where I went. And he said, oh, no, that's a scam. You're not going over and send nobody no money. I said, but when I send it, they're going to send it. was somewhere he, I was supposed to send him $290, but if I stood right there, I was going to get it back in just a few minutes. And I thought, oh, I what? See. It was just some big horror story he was making up. But I fell for it. That's, I'm like that guy that was on there before. There would be something that people can do. When we get older, our minds don't work so good. I'm 73. My husband's 82. But we don't, you know, sometimes people get on there and we just talk. He'll get the phone sometimes, be just talking, answering questions. And they've told us the Social Security office not to answer them about that because they, Social Security don't call you up on the telephone. But I'm wondering about this scam now about what we're, we're trying to get in. North Carolina laws are a little different than some states, I guess, because they're only taking people 80 or above. So I'm going to take him over there Friday to get his shot, but they won't give me one right now. You know, we've got to wait. I wish they'd do it where we could all get them at the same time, especially if, we, you know, we're married and living together. Doug? Yeah. But they don't. <laughs> I do, too. Yeah, I would wish they would simplify the eligibility. Well, um, you raise a, an interesting point, Jane, about um, one red flag we haven't talked about yet, which is if somebody um, calls you and says your Social Security card's been compromised or whatever the pitch is that's a scam or whatever, and they ask you to go buy a gift card at Walmart or anywhere else, don't. That's that's the red flag because once you buy a gift card, and sometimes they'll say, well, they've got a hold of your account. And the only way to protect the money in there is to, uh, you know, I, I heard about a scam one time. I actually got this call myself and played along with it. And they said, you have to get a prepaid government bond. And what I'm like, what is a prepaid government bond? You know, a gift card. They're government insured. And I'm like, no, they're not. That's a gift card. And um, once you give that number to them, the money's gone. There's no way to trace it. So anybody asking you to buy a gift card for anything over the phone should be really, you know, that's a huge red flag. Greg? Yeah, I mean, that, the, the gift card thing is, um, you know, we're seeing that, Doug, as you know, all over the place. Uh, we worked with an ARP member here over the last couple of weeks that got uh, caught up in a gift card scam with Target. Um, and uh, trying to help her unwind all that has been a sort of a very painful and long process. 
The truth is, is she's going to be out about a thousand dollars. Um, and the gift card really, once that's purchased, you know, Target, they don't have any liability for it. So, like a lot of other scams, once that money is spent on the gift cards uh, and they're gone, uh, it's very, very unlikely that you'll ever get that money back. Well, we're going to take a short break. We still have yet a cooler to give away, so give us a call. Our uh, number is 877-283-7570. You just might be a winner, so stay with us. We'll be right back. The IRS is warning consumers that fraudsters are jumping into action as coronavirus stimulus payments go out to millions of Americans. Here is what you should know to keep your stimulus payment out of scammers' hands. If the IRS has your bank account information, your stimulus check will be directly deposited into your account. If they don't have this information, you'll get a paper check. You can check on the status of your payment at irs.gov. The actual IRS won't call, email, or text to ask you to verify personal or financial information. If you get communications like this, it's almost certainly a scam. Be skeptical, even if the caller ID says IRS. The IRS also won't ask you to pay a fee to issue or speed up a stimulus payment. Don't deposit a check if it shows that a fee has been taken out. It's most likely a fake check. If you can spot a scam, you can stop a scam. For more tips, go to aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork. Hi, we're, we're the, the Oak Ridge, Ridge Boys, Boys, and you're watching AARP Live. Yeah. Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. We still have a Yeti cooler to give away, so let's go straight to the phones, and we've got a winner here. Uh, uh, right now, let's uh, check in with, uh, with Danny in California. Danny, it's good to talk to you. Welcome to AARP, yeah. and uh, what's your comment or question? Well, I got something to tell you, and then it happened two months ago, and then something happened today, and I've never heard anyone call in and tell you what I'm going to tell you. So here we go. Two months ago, I'm on my computer, and I'm looking at classic cars and rare cars and so forth. All of a sudden, my screen changes, and there's a toll-free number to call, and I called it. Well, this guy comes on the phone and says, I'm glad you called me. We're going to help you out. And he says, this goes clear back to, oh, 
February. Well, I haven't had my computer that long. At, at, at that time, when I was hacked into, it was only like a month old. And he said there was all kinds of garbage and stuff on there. And I could tell that I think he was from India. Well, pretty soon he said, we're, we're going to clean this up for you. And here it comes. He's actually writing on the screen somewhere around the world. And he's shown me how much it's going to cost me to do each item. And it was well over a grand for each one. And I finally got fed up and I hung up. Well, I've never forgot that. Now, get this. Last week, a friend of mine helped me get on the computer to apply for unemployment benefits in California. Well, we had all kinds of problems. So today she comes over to my house, and we get on the computer, and they denied every ID that I had. They could not find me in the system, and I got a valid driver's license. Now, here's something else that happened. I changed all my providers, and I got a new provider. Three days ago, I get a letter in the mail from a credit reporting agency saying that they have no record of me. None. Mm. Period. Doug? Um, well, the first part of that, where, where we were going, I thought was a classic tech support scam where uh, you are surfing on the on the web, this happens a lot, um, and you know you click on something and it downloads malware onto your computer that has JavaScript that a, a week later or whatever will flash up this thing saying you've got a virus on your computer. How many people listening have had this happen or they've had a call saying over Microsoft, there's a virus on your computer? Those are tech support scams and there are also rampant. You call the number and what typically happens is they'll say, yes, we've been monitoring your computer, but we have to, you have to allow us to remotely access into your computer to find out what's going on. Once they do that, they're in your computer and they can do all kinds of bad things. And maybe, I don't know, Danny, but maybe, I don't know if you'd let them remote access into your computer or what, but that could have been something about, you know, I thought you were going to say they locked you out of your computer but you're saying that they've eliminated your identity somehow with the state of California. I'm not sure what that's about, but if, you know, when these guys can, the, the, the tip I think is, if you get a message on your computer ever saying there's a virus on your computer, the first thing you should do is turn the computer off. Even though the voice might say, don't turn the computer off, turn the computer off and reboot it. Because a lot of times that will get rid of that warning message. And if you're worried that there is a virus on your computer, go down to a brick and mortar store, the Geek Squad or whatever, and have somebody look at it. The other tip, before you do that even, is if you have a young person mm -hmm. who's good at computers, a grandson or something, have them look at it. Gentlemen, uh, we got Beverly calling in from Mississippi. We want to get to her call because she's a winner. Beverly, what's your question? I just had a comment that I thought I needed to share with folks and let them know that if they have accessed the State Department of Health in their state in order to find out where they can, uh, the vaccination sites are, where they can go and receive the vaccine, and then they try to get in touch with those uh, sites and make an appointment that if they get a uh, unavailable message up on those uh, sites that it does not mean that that's going to uh, be long lasting because in just a matter of hours that could that very unavailable site could open back up and get some additional uh, appointments available I've had this happen to several friends. They've, they've finally gotten so discouraged because it, all the sites are showing unavailable, unavailable, no appointments available at the time they try to get in touch with them to schedule an appointment. 
But then immediately, within just a few hours or something, other people are getting through to them and getting appointments. So I think people have to be reminded they need to be persistent. Just don't get discouraged. Don't give up because eventually you will get through and you will get an appointment scheduled for your vaccine. Well, Be Beverly, thank you very much. That's uh, I'm glad that you shared that with us. Uh, Doug, um, we're going to kind of have to wind things down here, but we do want to remind folks about the AARP Fraud Watch Network. It's right here on your screen. The helpline is 877-908-3360. Or if you uh, want to go to the website, aarp.org, Fraud Watch Network. And remember what they say at AARP, if you can spot a scam, you can stop a scam. And uh, be sure and, and heed that message because uh, it certainly is heightened uh, around, this time, uh, around this time of year so far. Well, that about does it for tonight. AARP will be back with us on February the 18th. So I hope you'll be sure and join us then. Uh, we'll uh, be ta tackling another topic and uh, hope you'll uh, be sure and tune in for the, all of that. Well, thank you very much to our panelists here tonight. I'm John Jenkinson. Thank you very much for joining us. And good night from Rural America's most important network. <laughs>